right. even satisfied index india Pizza, right. mizoram has got uh, uh, number one place in the country correct right. that's true very correct right. no uh, whatever come whatever you know the baby will be very happy always you know no no worry nothing no <laughs> okay. always they will be laughing like that mizo mizo <laughs> girls and boys no they will be laughing like that they don't have any kind of worries no like uh, other part of india <laughs> they always happy smiling moreover <laughs> <laughs> they are like starting the life they resemble they resemble japanese yes yes ah uh, they are japanese like no uh, you can see a baby no you know online she is like almost japanese girl yeah <laughs> uh, japanese and tibetan misos are like of tibet tibet chinese and japanese mix uh, mm. yes japan almost size wise also height wise also they are like japanese right right i think it is now crossing 11 you can start uh, uh, yeah. the program uh. Uh, okay uh, good morning everyone good morning to our all uh, participants and greetings from the department of food technology uh, to our respected vice chancellor professor k r rao and also to our respected uh, uh, speaker um, dr harish kumar uh, who is here with us today and on behalf of the department of food technology mizoram university i welcome everyone uh, on this webinar so um, Uh, I want to take the honor of introducing our speaker before we start this uh, webinar. And Dr. Harish Kumar Madhyastha is a candidate with a two-decade-long research experience in biotechnology and molecular medicine, and also related to uh, food science. He is a leader with motivated scientific research activity uh, with a repute for managing more than 13 federal and private projects. and a result oriented researcher with excellent track record for accelerated scientific achievement and he has more than 850 citations to his published articles and counting more than 70 with an i10 index of 27 he has six international and indian patents to his name so during his early life as a researcher dr Har harish obtained two phd degree one in applied bio sciences from sardar patel university and the second from university of Mi miyazaki i hope i'm right sir miyazaki from japan in medicine um, and he started his career as a scientist in the startup titled shri marugappa chatya research center in chennai and which further flourished to be india's first community spirulina unit and subsequently expanded to major spirulina producing Uh, industry across india so he have greatly contributed to this research center as well after completing his postdoc from, from uh, miyazaki university he was appointed as a faculty position and he's still there today so he's serving still the, um, in the university he have uh, research interest in many areas especially in molecular nutraceuticals and biotherapies nano nanoceutical therapy and cell engineering artificial dermal and osteo substitutes and many other more research area as well so with a number of reputed national and international awards fellowship live members and accolades dr harish is an also an editorial me board member of seven leading research journals i think if we go uh, it will not stop i will we will not be able to stop introducing and uh, talk, uh, speaking about our um, a respected speaker today so i think we will start our webinar and sir the screen and the platform is on your hand thank you sir yeah so thank you dr day mm -hmm. it is a very long introduction of course it is not required of course i am all like you people only so i am not doing any extra and just doing science so so what is uh, my name is uh, madhyastha this is our name and harish kumar and uh, i am belongs to university of miyazaki miyazaki is a southernmost uh, island of japan it is a southernmost island and uh, it is a beautiful uh, place especially for the honeymoon so right it is uh, exactly like goa exactly like goa resembles goa in india so i belongs to uh, faculty of medicine uh, department 
this is my email students may be uh, interested to contact me for any kind of clarification or any kind of queries henceforth of course i will be continuously attached with uh, your university henceforth fine so this is my topic today uh, neutraceuticals in dermal wound healing of course it is a mixture of uh, nano technology nutrition and medical so it is a com combination of the three aspects together sir so, uh, sorry to interrupt your screen share is not yet started open the niche now is it okay yes sir yes sir okay so of course uh, this is uh, neutraceuticals on minute i will put mic on pen on so neutraceuticals and dermal wound healing is my topic today so my name is harish kumar madhyastha belongs to faculty of medicines and university of miyazaki and this is my email this is most important for the any students or faculty for the further contact or collaborations and joint project or sample analysis whatever it is so please take down this email and you are free to contact me 24/7 i am very happy to share my knowledge and gain knowledge from you also this is my bidirectional in simple terms do something for the uh, janma bhumi karma bhumi is my japan janma bhumi is my india so that bridging the karma bhumi and janma bhumi together to develop the science at per se so uh, i don't have any conflict of interest in this uh, talk so i don't have any conflict of interest and uh, this is our ipr number of this uh, this entire talk and this is our logo uh, in japanese it is called miyazaki dai gaku so it is completely it is in short it is called miyazaki daigaku so we principally belongs to a applied physiology department it is a basic medical science he is our professor mariyama head of the department and uh, yuji nakajima associate professor and uh, dr radha she works on the micro rna signature and diabetic wound healing and uh, mi rna biomarkers in diabetic wound healing the professor uh, is a toxicologist and blood coagulation is his subject and angiogenesis and uh, cancer micro environment is dr nakajima and this is myself and she is uh, tomato mariyama she is a lab assistant in our department it is short and simple we are five members faculty five staff department and this is my background in the uh, google scholars in the uh, we could publish uh, totally eight papers and two more are just now it is published one is uh, one is in the nature scientific report and another one is rc advances all are belonging to the neutraceuticals and uh, nano science and uh, arsenic toxicity you can just uh, go go with this uh, keywords Madhyastha Harish Kumar. Then you can see all my research activities. I principally work on the biomaterial, nanotechnology, and wound healing, physical biochemistry. This is my three subjects, which are interesting and continuously working in last twenty years in Japan. So, whatever the research you do, it has to be originated from the society, and we have to give back into the society as a product or as a formulations. or as a knowledge to the society of course we get a lot of information from the society unless you give it back to the society it has no value at all this is my principle so it is called 3l policy land to the lab and back to the life this is the case studies of uh, my uh, research uh, one 67 year old diabetic woman continuously uh, admitted into the hospital with inflammation on the right limb and shows that esr amount is 64 mm per hour this is very high and random glucose is diabetic it is 201 mg per deciliter and leukocyte count is too high aspirate is high 
ALT is also high and as usual patients are given the piperacin and tegobactam for 6 days and discharge after the month once again she admitted back because it is a diabetic calcitis or diabetic wound in the leg and another patient is 73 diabetic male it's the 3 4p syndromes one is pain paralysis parathesis pulselessness pallor and phycothemia all these are medical terminology which it is a degenerative disease in the diabetic condition especially the diabetic wound in the leg or a limb or a ulcer whatever it is so cases are like this one you see this is the diabetic boy 24 years old this very pathetic conditions so we get knowledge from this one yes diabetic wound cannot be healed further as you all know it is a skin anatomy it has the epidermal region dermal region and hypodermal regions this hypodermal region is the most sensitive regions because of it has so many vessels adipocytes lymphocytes and dermal papilla importantly this uh, stem hair cells which are originating from the dermis through the dermal papilla regions of course epidermis is a just a tissue mass where there is no major blood circulation or anything will be there but of course micro vessels will be there and uh, this is the epidermis is the most rigid human organ it uh, gets the severe insult all days from the environment or from the toxic materials and other things so that is most protective layer in the skin complication in the wound this is the normal wound schematics it has to be healed if it is a diabetic it will not heal one out of four patients are having diabetic condition it gives the 3d phenomena one is economic to the persons duration in the hospital and finally depression in the life because continuously hospitalization discharge medicine money doctor pay, uh, doctor charges hospital charges medicines all those things finally people will go for the depressions so what is the definition wound it is a pathological state of where tissue becomes separated or destroyed due to the accidents or from the natural phenomena due to the pathological conditions and or resulting in the loss of the body substances which associated function impairment of course it has to be healed otherwise wound is a only a permanent it is a permanent damage to the body reverse phenomena of the wound is called the healing closure of the defect by scar forming for supporting tissue and restoration forms of the for, form and functions of the damaged area this is the normal wound the normal skin of course this is the wound and it has to heal but healing will not be proper during the diabetic conditions why because this is a schematic once again is the dermal region especially the dermal regions it has a lot of bacteria are present in the dermal regions in the topical region because of the presence of this bacteria the external oxygen and internal oxygen niche will be disturbed further and it gives the low oxygen biofilm niches between the external region to the internal wound bed so that there will be impaired migration and the proliferation of the keratinocytes and fibroblast then imbalance in the immuno cells will be formed so that host defense clearance will not be taking place so different techniques are available wound dressing hydrothermal vacuum assisted mist therapy electric therapy oxygen therapy hyperbaric and recently these are all techniques right these are all techniques but recently the neurotoxicological based wound healings are also available of course in our ayurveda systems or siddha yunani and all other natural alternate medicine this one there are so many uh, compounds which are available to rapid healing one beautiful or an excellent clinically proven traditional technology is from andhra pradesh 
where shrivalli puttoru it has uh, some medicinal plant and they give uh, they put the leaves on the wounded or a bang, uh, fractured area and keep for the natural healing immediately it heals back of course it is not directly with the wound dermal wound but it is the bone fractures of course bone if it is wounded also it, it has to be bring back into the natural forms that is also called bone healing technology right so why natural why natural uh, neutrosticals right for of course wounding is the primary damage so most proven thing is the topical antimicrobial compound is calendus succus and hemostasis will be there for that many drugs herbs vitamins amino acids minerals are helping in the blood clotting blood clotting is the most important phenomena of the primary uh, wound in the first stages of the wound because uh, when there is a wound there is a lot of blood oozing from the blood vessel because the damage in the uh, blood vessels but it has to be plugged because due to the conditions of the blood clotting so that uh, proper blood flow will not be out outsourced into the uh, damaged area or the blood loss will not be there so that blood clotting should be there and once it is clot there is a inflammatory phases will be activated this inflammatory stages activation can be taking place from the vitamin a bromelains and protein intake and vitamin c so vitamins and uh, vitamin a and vitamin c are most important vitamins which helps in the activation of the inflammatory cytokines and all other uh, cytokines and all other active molecules which has the capacity to reduce the external bacterial invasion to the wound of course after that the fourth stage is a proliferative stage phase so once again vitamins and centella asiatica this is the one most plant which is continuously been used to promote the type 1 collagen synthesis and another one is glucosamine and which enhances the hyaluronic acid productions which has capacity to attract the fibroblasts to the wounded area of course vitamin and zinc are natural mineral sub- supplements and uh, calendus of success also has the like uh, antibacterial antimicrobial it has also also the uh, have the capacity to attract the keratinocytes and fibroblasts to the wounded area of course allergy, aloe vera it is a very common plant in the india uh, so so many aloe vera formulations are available with uh, as a cream or a jelly or a hydrogel or aloe vera and encapsulated bandits are available which helps in the formation of the granular tissue of course remodeling this is the last stage of the wound healing it should taking place with the help of the proteins unless proteins there won't be any remodeling stage so uh, we can have the basic phenomena by using the different uh, nat- uh, neurotoxicals one we can club with the some nanometals club with the nanometals or for the dental implant we can use some juice powder or other things which has strong calcium or strontium or magnesium stabilizing agents and magnetic nanomaterials can be also used with the herbal compound components and uh, neutrosetical doped carbon dots and neosomes can also help all this synergetically or collectively have the actions of nadph oxidations signaling pathway dna damage uh, reverse mechanisms or reversing the lysosomal damage er stress or mitochondrial damage this is the principal mechanism of entire wound healing technology whatever the condition to the body from the external stimulation so stimuli or from the uh, toxic uh, insult to the body first thing which is happening in the tissue or to the cellular level is production of ros 
nit reactive nitro species reactive sulfur species this is the four three are major culprits in the cells because of this there will be autophagy irregulations signal pathway alterations dna oxidations or mutation in the gene or sometimes it induces the apoptotic of the normal cells irregular apoptotic or necrotic decay of the cells tissues pyroptosis this is the one of the uh, recent uh, evidences which are observed due to the neither it goes to the apoptotic or necrotic but it goes to the coma stages and cell organelle stress is another important due to the ros rns and rss productions in the cells due to the external insert so we can have the end point applications like the blood cell resilience mechanisms or dental implant dental wound or skin regenerations or reversing of the mitochondrial or cellular organelles so uh, first i will briefly connect with the uh, formulations of one of the compound which i have been working from the 1992 that is called spirulina uh, spirulina as you all know it is a cyanobacterial uh, species it is a single cell proteins which is uh, commercially tablets are available in india and all almost all asian countries including japan so uh, i have been working in one of the Uh, metabolites of the spirulina that is called the phycocyanin in short it is called cpc cpc is from the spirulina algae and it is a dark blue color because it is evident it is a morphology spir uh, phycocyanin powder and fluorescent protein pretty high molecular weight it is 47 kilo dalton it has so many biological activity like anti inflammatory anti cancer anti hepatitis and uh, all other if you put a phycocyanin in the pubmed you will get hit of around 1400 publications all are esi published on it is so a lot of publications are available however uh, application of this phycocyanin in the wound healing is the first time we derived from our lab we have got some eight publication good publication out of this and importantly it is fd approved diet nutraceuticals very important whatever the formulations or whatever the uh, product you are making out of the plant it has to be approved from the approving agents in india or in the universe in the universal approving agent is food and drug approval people of the usa this spirulina and you know, this phycocyanin is fd approved one fine this is the structures it is a linear tetraporoids uh, linear tetraporoids having uh, ch3 and uh, coh bond and it is connected with the amino acids amino acid sequence this is the heme and this is the amino acid sequence bridging of the heme as well as the uh, amino acid is from the cysteine bridge cysteine bridge particularly links with the cysteine of the amino acid group so that it is called it is function is exactly like hemoglobin where the heme will be there globin is the another molecules so exactly the mechanism and the structural orientation of the phycocyanin is exactly like the hemoglobins this is the globin molecule moiety globin like moieties and this is the amino acids the cysteine uh, sulfur bridge is the most important cysteine sulfur bridge is the most important so we prepared the nanoparticle out of this one this is very thermo regulated uh, mechanisms we do, uh, isolate uh, we, uh, we prepared the different thermo synthesis because this since it is a 40 degree uh, below 40 beyond 40 it is a uh, degenerating proteins so that we did the what which suitable concentration is most uh, better and most suitable for the best product synthesis and this is the principle of the metal reductions we use the sodium citrate as a reducing agent we produce the sodium and the nitrate and because of the electronic uh, configurations electronic coupling mechanisms we produce finally ag zero charged metals 
and e conjugation reactions which have the core magneting principles of this one and this is also proved that uh, ag core has the phycocyanin uh, layer or surface functionalized with the polypeptide of course it is available from the polypeptide from the uh, phycocyanin and uh, this is the temp characterizations of course here you can have the 40 degree there is a size increase of the uh, uh, phycocyanin ag uh, silver metals because of the uh, fine layer or a uh, corona formations see it's completely formed out. whereas in the pure ag there is no corona formations so it shows that there is a size increase and the capturing of this ag metal with the polypeptide it forms the corona formation in the ag so that it is a single metallic protein conjugate protein comes from the phycocyanin and characterize that uh, this uh, formulations of course 610 nanometer lambda max of the 610 and 614 is the properties of the phycocyanin and uh, 380 and uh, this 400 is the for the ag if we wanted to do the thermodynamic scan of the uv through the uv uh, spectrophotometer to know the whether phycocyanin has degenerated during the conjugation with the ag or not but uh, here up to 40 degree there is no um, degener degeneration of the uh, ag metal conjugations but beyond the 40 like 60 degree and 80 degree there is a complete uh, flat off that shows that up to 40 degree phycocyanin conjugation is the best way for the ag coupling reactions zeta potentials to identify the uh, what is the uh, zeta values whether it is a negative charge or a positive charge unfortunately beyond 40 degree it shows the negative charge up to the minus 40 but uh, in all other this one uh, all other thermoregulated synthesis zeta potential shows the plus 40 charges raman spectra shows the important peak at the 1200 uh, shift up to the per centimeter square uh, per centimeter square uh, shift this is the most important shift of the agcpc and agnp that clearly shows that uh, in all other shift 2000 to 1000 to 1400 there is no shift of the energy intensity like combs but in the 1200, AGCPC and AG have the perfect bonding natures. Of course, uh, only CPC also showed some peaks in the 1200. Uh, it may be a convolence, convolence nature of the uh, instrument. We don't know. So we did the XPX scan to identify what is the bonding between the CPC and AG metals. Of course, here we find once again peculiar energy shift binding energy from at uh, 635 this confirms that there is a con conformational changes in the ag metal surfaces after the combination with the protein the spectrophotometers spectropolarimeter we have done which uh, spectrophoto Polarimeter is the uh, CD spectra is the instrument to identify the shift in the hemoglobin or a globin or the protein foldings. Here, this is the AG C CPC and AG CPC. In the both cases, there is no significant change in the, this is uh, 235 and this is 227. There is only a insignificant uh, differences between the shift of the beta sheet of the protein that is the CPC, phycocyanin, before conjugation and after the conjugation. So biofunctional analysis, fine. And uh, there are so many issues even in the nanoparticles also. One is the, once again, the ROS productions and uh, 
metal particles increases the fenton reaction cellular reductions and lysosomal damage because of these three rs production will be there in the cells once again which have the so many deliberating issues like autophagy oxidation mutation apoptosis necrosis and mitochondrial restoration uh, er stress mitochondrial stress and other things so first we did the icps integrated coupled plasma spectrophotometry to identify how much blood cells are on this ag ag and phycocyanin concentrations are taking up in the blood cells so it shows that at the 4 hours constant or 4 hours incubation period there is a significant increase of the increase in the ag metals in the blood cells then we did the rbc count and uh, with the dose dependency and the time dependency structures in all this case in the 25 microliter of the microgram per liter of the ag concentration at uh, 4 hours shows the highest uh, rbc counts the hemolysis hemolysis is a phenomena is called the blood destruction or blood cells uh, so that uh, oxygen carrying pigment hemoglobin is freed from the surrounding media too much hemolysis is a bad sign of the hemolytic um, blood cell stress or the blood cells uh, ruptures. It is not at all good phenomena in the blood physiology. So we wanted to know whether we have this AG metal has, AG CPC conjugate has any deligrating or a bad effect on the blood hemolytic conditions. Yes, up to 50 microgram per liter, there is no sign of blood hemolysis, but in the highest conditions, we found complete hemolysis or almost 100%, right? 100% uh, hemolytic conditions. Of course, this is the Tritonax. It is a soap. It is as good as 100 microgram per liter of concentration of AG metal shows the complete hemolysis like positive control Tritonax. But in what time it is, of course, that is most important to know. So up to six hours incubation time, there is, won't be any uh, hemolytic conditions in the blood. So we confirm that 25 microgram, this up to six hours, doesn't have any deleterating effect on the blood hemolytic component. This is the... Uh, instrumental uh, tubes we have to put it in the small capillary tubes and centrifuge with the high centrifuge tubes and see the pcv packed cell volumes of the blood and measure it hematocrit total hematocrit is uh, is also most important it is a packed cell volume this is a test a simple blood measure the proportion of the blood cells in the red blood cells in the body if you centrifuge the whole blood after taking from the human or from any animals, uh, it gives the three layers. One is plasma. It is slightly yellowish in color and puffy coat. It has invisible coat and hematocrit contents. So that it gives the most, uh, whether the patient is having uh, anemic or polyclemia conditions. So we did this an analysis by using our concentrations. So we found that uh, it has no effect on the up to 50 degree and once again in four hours conditions. Fine. As I mentioned, wound and blood clot is the first and primary important functions of the wound because the clotting mechanisms taking place with the help of the calcium divalent ions. It is eccentric pathway and intrinsic pathways. Both pathways are working synergetically to produce the blood clotting substances. For example, in the intrinsic pathway, calcium divalent and uh, intrinsic pathway, intrinsic also calcium divalent helps in the conversion of for the prothrombin into the thrombin through the enzyme prothrombinase. This conversion of prothrombin to thrombin by the prothrombinase, once again, with the help of the secondary divalent calcium ion, helps in the formation of the 
blood clot because fibrinogen will be converted into the fibrin with the help of thrombin as well as calcium divalent. So that once blood clot is there, you, you will not feel any blood loss. So we did the coagulation time assay. Once again, 25 microgram per liter give the good best result. And hemoglobin sweat of our diameter is we have done. It is also giving the same result. So there are several cells in the wound healing. First and foremost is the fibroblast cells. Second one is uh, second uh, fibroblast, and second one is carnosite cells. These two cells are the primary cells of the wound healing, and these two cells communicate with the help of TGF beta and collagen, TGF beta, collagen, angio angiotensins and TGF beta 2 and macrophages, all other cells are also synergetically works with the communication between the fibroblast and keratinocytes. Finally, which helps in the reepithelialization of the wounded tissue. So in order to find our material has the, any innate uh, stress producing uh, phenomena inside the cells, we use, it is very simple assay, DCFHDA. DCFHDA is a fluorescent probe. It is a non-fluorescent probe. It is a membrane uh, permeable probe, right? If there is any stress in the cells, in the cells, of course, this DCFHDA enters into the cell. Once there is a stress, this stress produces, of course, as I said earlier, ROS and ROO. Once this is the elevation of the ROS and ROO in the cells, because of the enzyme esterase, this DCFHDA converts into the DCF. This DCF is a fluorescent one. DCFH is not fluorescent. So we did the control cells and AG nanoparticle alone and AG CPC conjugated one. Here, indication of the gr green fluorescent, uh, this is the confocal microscope taken with the 10, 10x magnifications. So AG alone shows the high number of uh, stressed one, but this is resilientated. That means a number of stressed uh, fi fiber bars are reduced. It is as good as control. control. And uh, cellular optic uh, confocal laser scanning microscope we have done. Of course, this AGCPC is uh, because we have antibody for the CPC. So we have captured that where exactly it is localized in the nucleus or in the cytoplasm. It is, ob we observed that it shows this is the cytoplasm because it is a DAPI, right? And this is the anti-CPC, anti-CPC conjugated antibodies so that we can find this all localization in the cytoplasm, not in the nucleus. That is a good sign. And this is a simple cell migration assay. It is an in vitro cell migration assay with the cavity chamber, right? So what we do is we have rubber compartments. It is an inert rubber compartments. We grow, we place this inert rubber compartment on the cover in the culture vessels and start growing the cells, right? Then after the confluence stage, we remove that uh, rubber inert and see the Cells migrations. Of course, we have video that I will show later on, and see the how much uh, cells are migrated, right, from the edge. This uh, this gives the this mimics the wound in the artificial conditions. Of course, this is a zero hours uh, control one. This is the control, and this is a drug treated one. And even in the 24 hours, this one in control cells did not heal completely. Still some gap is there, right? You see, this is the gap. But uh, once you added the drug, here it is almost completed. It's almost completed. So that if you take the difference of this and this, you can see this, this drug is suitable for the healing of the wound. This is the control migrations, live cell migrations. I repeat once again, so this panel is a control and this is a drug treated one. So 
here if you see this one okay. see this is the control one and this is the drug treated one so that this is the wound edge and in the control cells only this you can see up to here only but in the drug treated one cells are started almost double it is not exactly double almost double the cells migrated so finally uh, what is the most uh, active component of the cell migrations in the cells as we all know actin actin gives the cell a shape and it gives the strength to the movement and third it gives the polarization angle due to the actin molecules so this is the fibroblast no polarization partial polarization and full polarizations there during the wound fine the mechanism is the, this is the rare end of the fibroblast this is the front end so it is just like amoeba movement which amoeba moves like that it goes and grips to the next stage and from the back it lifts back and from that cells divide this is how the fibroblasts are movement are taking place the because of the two feedbacks one is a positive feedback and actin filaments are most important is positive feedback plaque kh3 which induces the rac1 and cdc42 these two are the primary molecules which induces the cell migrations which indirectly help from the upstream molecules of pi3k right and this uh, actin molecules once again induces the pi3k pi3k induces rac1 and cdc42 in one way and pi3k also induces plaque h3 one this plaque therity once if it is increased and it induces rac1 so that rac and cdc42 by it will be induced by the two molecules one is pi3k as well as the plaque hd3 so that the polarization of the fibroblast will have the dynamic actin molecules which is associated for the cell frontal movements so that it helps in the further migrations so key point is we should have some neutrocyticals like phycocyanin or any others as i said in the previous one slide there are so many neutrocyticals are available which has as the principal component whether that molecule is increasing one the whether actin molecules or induces pi3k or induces rac1 cdc42 so this is the confocal one this is the wild type fibroblast where there is a, of course the uh, actin molecules are visible but it is not it is a normal cells but if you treat it with the drug there is a lot of actin molecule depositions see these are all actin molecules depositions in the cells in the fibroblast cells so that we found that our drug which has the capacity uh, the drug which is manufactured from the neutrocytical component has the capacity to induce the actin molecule thereby helps in the frontal and dynamic movement of the fibroblast and it ultimately helps in the migration of the fibroblast another uh, mm, uh, another system is also there this is the beta cysterol it is uh, i think it is uh, isolated from the anthracyclic glycosides from the aloe vera aloe vera it has a lot of good um, uh, good and beneficial aspect for the cell migrations with the principles of the uh, it is also a kind of anti uh, diabetic conditions so hyperglycemic insulin resistance is reduced nitric acid nitric acid stress is increased decreased anti hyperglycemic is reduced visceral toxicity is also reduced and 
due to that one it once again helps in the insulin recycling in the cells insulin recycling in the cells so that uh, that is why in the aloe vera as a neurotoxical component as a food component or a nat- uh, natural aesthetical component it is fine getting the more importance in the <clears throat> uh market so many companies especially himalayan drug or himalayan uh, company uh, they are manufacturing the so many uh, aloe vera formulations for the various health benefits so this is my future summary and direction of course i worked with the cpc it is already fda approved drug and we stabilized the formulations mechanism of the action is partially revealed applied diabetic mode of course this is pending work and the clinical trial of course we have to have the another big task without clinical trial the product cannot be entered into the market and uh, these are all my collaborator in india especially and uh, this is the indian university indonesian university iit karakpur madras iit bhu vit amit rajasthan iit kanpur uh, iit kanpur is uh, my uh, oldest collaborator and professor ashok kumar is uh, helping us and amit rajasthan jaipur is uh, one more good collaborator and of course vit in uh, well no tamil nadu and uh, of course iit karakpur now i don't have any karakpur on professor uh, anlava mitra was there now he is retired and this to our in thailand also we have some collaborations i want to have some more logos in my next presentations thanking you thanks yeah uh, thank you very much sir so we also one minute i cannot yeah okay. can you hear me sir yeah okay tell me okay uh, sir uh, actually we are also looking forward that uh, our institute mizoram university logo will soon be added to your <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, last slide of your presentation yes uh, it was a very informative uh, presentation sir yeah. and uh, about 239 participants were there and i am delighted so i shall be putting the questions uh, for them okay and there may be some other questions which arise in their mind because uh, this was so informative that uh, definitely some new questions uh, will come into the participants mind so they can contact us or can contact sir directly sure and uh, sir will answer to all of your queries for now i am putting uh, four questions received from the participants okay the first question is by lal juliana juliana uh uh-huh. sir is there any side effect by using electric therapy cut wound or electric physiotherapy for eliminating paining of some part of the body or no nerve paining no no low low electrical energy with a minimum of uh, up to 10 milliamps 10 milliamps of the energy is not a not a doesn't have any side effect okay yeah so i think that that uh, answer to uh, lal juliana yeah the second is from vvs narayana karari uh-huh. as diabetic wound healing is a multi yeah. function multi factorial condition right is micronutrients alone be sufficient to address the issue uh now people are giving the micronutrients of the zinc supplement and uh, vitamin su- supplements vitamin e and vitamin c with the zinc mm-hmm. uh they are giving mm-hmm. but uh, if it is a severe diabetic wound like a lot of uh, tissue loss with, uh, with uh, necrotic cells and this uh, zinc zinc is a basically a metal it is a metal Uh, which has a property as a antibacterial and other things but it may not help alone some other some other uh, tissue regenerating medicines may be required that is why people are having the multi formal or a uh, 
multi multi what you call the multi hybrid systems they are giving doctors are prescribing okay yeah uh, one question from uh, miss munmi huya what happens to blood pressure if the hematocrit levels are high blood pressures are uh, going to lower okay yeah it's not a quick levels are high the blood pressure levels will be low because there is a lot of uh, negative pressures on the blood cells myocardiocytes okay yeah and uh, miss karnali kundu she has asked does the vitamin k have any effect on wound healing yes it is one of the major component of the wound healing okay. vitamin e is most required uh, component for the wound healing mm -hmm. and there was one more uh, actually uh, he mentioned about his mother's case that uh -huh. uh, his mother got cured uh, his mother got cured of diabetes i think uh, let me see the question mm -hmm. okay uh, by using homeopathy over allopathic medicines so it is uh -huh. by Can using homeopathy over allopathic medicine yeah so uh, so what are the difference between the two uh, forms of medicine how did she get cured by the homeopathy but uh, not by the more famous medicine right right because uh, nowadays uh, many rejected patients from the uh, allopathic clinics going back to the ayurveda and homeopathy and uh, they are they are getting good sign they are getting good signs uh, maybe maybe that uh, in the allopathy only one drug formulations are working synergistically on the wound mm -hmm. so for example they are some drugs are specialized drug to attract the fibroblast and chitinocytes only but they are they are not segregating all other mechanisms and all but in homeopathy there are it is a mixture of the many herbal formulations mm -hmm. that may help what you call synergistically okay. mm -hmm. so that is one conditions and uh, reverse results were also there evident there is evident from the publications that if you remove the each component of the plant mm -hmm. protein or a lipids or a or some other all other all or any other glycosides and other things and apply individually to the wound it will not work okay mm -hmm. okay so, so uh, i think uh, that's why people are now coming with the concept of the polyherbal comp polyherbal formulations okay. like multi multi yes. multi yeah. component correct okay. so uh, there are a few more questions sir sure no problem so what is the remedy of psychological stress can any element help to recover recovered uh, loss due to stress which uh, which which any, which any, any particular element for uh, getting recovery from psychological stress psychological do yoga okay <laughs> <laughs> so is there any like micronutrient or some nutraceutical which can yeah yeah you see brahmi one brahmi is there no so brahmi yeah yeah brahmi Ar Uh, i don't know the vedic uh, botanical name mm -hmm. uh, it is common name is brahmi some brahmi which uh, is, it shows the good uh, psychotropic uh, beneficial aspect to the soothing of the neurons okay. so i also don't know much about the mechanism and other things mm -hmm. but i heard and i read somewhere else that's all and any uh, nutraceutical like he has mentioned uh, dr amit uh, gupta and uh, ms ruma bhattacharya 
Mm-hmm. Phycocyanin nano product can it be used for duaberic retinotherapy? Uh, maybe true. It is possible. Some researchers in uh, NIH, Washington, um, they are do- doing it. Uh, their aim is uh, not to cure the retinopathy per se. Their aim is to have the contact lens, contact lens with the phycocyanin uh, layer. Because it is a biodegradable system, the contact lens. So they are partially successful with the development of the phycocyanin contact lens. So maybe it helps in the retinopathy and um, retina cell engineering. Mm-hmm. So that's all. Okay. And uh, there was one question from my side, sir. So I had uh, started working on uh, some food nanomaterials and uh, mm-hmm. from bio waste also we, uh, extracted some nanomaterials. Mm-hmm. So if we are taking a popular popular material like for polar polysaccharide like starch or cellulose or maybe glycogen and we are breaking it down to its nano scale. Mm-hmm. Is it necessary to conduct the animal trials or maybe the hemolytic test for that? Uh, see, what is my suggestion and what is my way of uh, working is first we work with the primary cells to identify the mechanism to identify the mechanism and if you get a promising result you can publish in uh, because this work uh, just uh, three months before i published in uh, collides and surfaces biointerface four point uh, i think four point eight uh, okay. three, yeah okay. something like that Mm-hmm. So, I did not do any animal studies. It is a, uh, what you call, ex vivo blood cells. I removed the blood I had from, from the animal and did the all blood cells assays and all. Mm-hmm. And I could convince the reviewers and editors with this data and published it. My next step is, my next step is, do some formulation of this phycocyanin and apply it to the animal. Okay. And see whether it has any internal blood circulation system or any internal blood toxicity degree or not one. Meantime, see the wound healing capacity of the uh, uh, this product. Yeah. So that is, of course, animals, uh, animal studies are required before coming to the any clinical trials. Otherwise, it cannot. Okay, so still there are several questions coming up. So uh, the participants can do one thing. Uh, we have got your questions. You can still write in the question and answer box. So we, we, we shall be sending it to the speaker, sir. Sure. And, uh, he can uh, give brief replies to all the relevant questions, sir. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Okay. So I think that will be useful for our participants. Yeah. So now, uh, Dr. Baby, that hope we can... Uh, uh, give the vote of thanks, so then we shall be concluding our talk. Sure. Baby, please. One minute, one minute. Yes, yes sir. Uh, it is uh, total is one hour, 15 minutes. Is it early or the late or the what? No, it's okay, sir. It is, <laughs> there is nothing not like... A problem. Not a problem, sir. Not a problem. No, no, no. I cost mm-hmm. uh, it is one hour of presentation or one and a half of presentation. That's what I wanted to know because I have another one presentation next week, right? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sir, it is uh, like generally it goes uh, more than one hour and it gets completed within one and a half hours. In, our, in, in, in my class, in the medical college, we have one and a half hours. It is an, uh, 90 minutes, 80 plus 10, 90 minutes. For one session, sir. One, one class, one class, mm-hmm. student. Okay. In India, what is the fashion? That's what I wanted to know. In well, VA, in India, sir, we, our classes are generally of 50 minutes. 50 minutes. No. And like mm-hmm. VAT, because like IIT and all. Because I go to IIT Kanpur and other people mm-hmm. for the teaching and all. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Generally, what we see in our students are they, uh, they cannot keep their concentration at us for like <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, yeah, long One hour or more. So generally, we keep it for 15 minutes, sir. And 10 okay. minutes, generally, the duration is of 
60 minutes, 50 minutes we go for the interview. So in that case, I am just 15 minutes ahead. Okay, manageable, fine. <laughs> That's it. Completely okay. Uh, Dr. Bevy, you can uh, Thank you. put the photo. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank uh, you. So, uh, Mr. Arnab Roy is one of the faculty from a department as well. So, I, I think I would like to invite him to thank uh, our speaker, sir, if that's fine with him. So, from my side, a uh, very informative talk, and I think uh, uh, we hope that in future we will also collaborate and work together with your expertise, uh, uh, obviously, and also with your my guidance. Pleasure. My pleasure. Mr. Arnab, please. Thank you, Dr. Bevy. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to deliver my vote of thanks to Dr. Harish Kumar Madhastya for this nice and very informative sessions or lecture for everyone, for the participants. I hope this lecture has benefited in many ways for uh, suppose in different aspects, different questions they have in their mind. So it will be definitely be very beneficial for them. So it is also very, uh, I should say very good opportunity for us, this food technology department of Mizoram University to conduct such webinar and uh, have uh, Dr. Harish Kumar Madhastya as our honorable speaker here. So I would also like to put the thanks to the participants who have joined, who have participated this webinar and listened and uh, actively participated in this webinar. Also thanks to them. And uh, for this, uh, whoever actively participated in this webinar, the certificates, e-certificates will be given to all of you maximum within 10 days. If any discrepancy, you can anytime you can contact, but for 10 days, please, please be patient with us. And finally, I'll again say thanks to Dr. Harish Kumar Madhastya to give his valuable time for us and give his knowledge or his this lifelong, his career, his very much interesting career he already have in his life, in his research time period. So thank you, sir, for being with us and giving us your valuable knowledge to us. Thank you, sir. And thank you all. My pleasure. My pleasure. See you next week once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Right. So with this, we have come to the conclusion uh, conclusion of today's webinar. The participants can uh, log off now. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for connecting. So we'll be we'll keep connected with you, sir. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.